This week, someone is working on a Steam Deck controller, and it isn't Valve. We'll explore. Plus, will Civilization 7 work on the Steam Deck? And multiple new Steam betas hit this week, hinting at what's in store for the Steam Deck. All of this and more today. That's right, it's Steam Deck news time. So, Steam Deck HQ is reporting on this exciting news. Someone in the community has taken it upon themselves to build a Steam Deck controller. Apparently, at Camp Creates on Twitter has been talking about how they've been feeling inspired to design the controller in CAD, and they're now attempting to build the thing in real life. Their CAD mock-up looks excellent basically exactly what I would want from a Steam Deck controller. Just mash the two ends of the Steam Deck together and call it a day. Apparently this is being built with replacement parts sourced from iFixit presumably. So the PCBs will be genuine Steam Deck components. All Camp Creates will need to do is design a circuit board that connects the genuine parts and converts those into hit events or via Bluetooth or maybe a USB. So you'll be able to connect it to your PC and have a good time. Now that's no small task, and that is in addition to actually finishing the CAD design for the controller and getting that 3D printed or otherwise manufactured. Now this is exciting news, not the least of which because I had a similar thought a couple months ago, but I don't have the CAD experience, nor do I have the expertise with embedded systems that I would need to get something like this done. I'm so glad that somebody else is taking up this challenge. Hopefully they'll be able to pull it off and release their designs and code as well. And if they do, I would love to assemble one here on the channel for you guys. So I will be keeping an eye on this project. Get subscribed if you don't want to miss it. So this week, Gamescope saw a big change that brings ROG Ally and Ally X support to the handheld. But you might be wondering, what is Gamescope? And the technical term for it is a microcompositor. To put it simply, it's the software layer on SteamOS that allows big picture mode to act kind of like your desktop. It controls which game is currently in focus and allows for Steam to adjust resolutions, applying FSR and NIS upscaling, and more. Gamescope was created by Valve, and they actually released it as free and open source code. And it is now actually the default compositor in most other Linux gaming distros like Chimera. Well, developer Matt Schwartz added support for the ROG Ally and the Ally X's displays. This allows the device to be controlled by the SteamOS performance menu, among other things. This includes updating the refresh rate using the slider, enabling VRR, and a lot more. And apparently this is the same display that's used in the GPD Win Mini 2024, and reports have it that it works great on that device too. Civilization 7 is coming to Linux with a native build. We already knew this. And this is the kind of game that we should expect to have a native Linux build, honestly. Uh, the audience of Linux gamers is there for these grand Forex strategies. Hey, I'm one of them. Uh, and it has clearly made sense for them in the past since they keep developing ports for the game to Linux. Now, I, like I said, I'm a big 4X strategy guy. So having Civilization 7 coming to Linux in 2025 is very exciting. But I've been curious about how it's going to run on Linux. And well, this week they revealed the PC specs. Do note that these are Windows requirements and Firaxis says that they'll be releasing the minimum Linux and Mac OS details later, but uh, this will give us a little bit of a benchmark anyway. The low-end specs require an Intel Core i3-10100 or a Ryzen 3 1200, a GTX 1050 or an RX 460, and 8 gigabytes of RAM. Interestingly, 1080p is the lowest resolution listed on this page, so I'm curious if the uh, Steam Deck's 1280x800 screen is going to be supported. Now, minimum specs, you're looking at the Intel Core i5-10400 or the Ryzen 5 3600X. You're looking at the RTX 2060 or the RX 6600, and you need a minimum of 16 gigabytes of RAM, which will deliver about 60 FPS. Now, I've found that civilization style games where it's turn-based really doesn't make much of a difference what frame rate you're playing at. Um, so. I think that this will probably work just fine on the Steam Deck, but that's just my thoughts. I'd love to hear yours in the comments below. And, you know, I am really stoked for Civilization 7, but it feels like just yesterday that I reviewed Civilization 6 here on the channel, which there's going to be a link up here, uh, and that makes me feel extremely old. Oh my god. <laughs> now, let me ask you a question. Do you believe in the work that I'm doing here? Why not like that smash button? It's the best way to tell YouTube you want to see more videos just like this. You can also get subscribed if that's more your speed. All right, now that you've hit the subscribe button, let's continue. So it's been about a month since we reviewed the uh, most played games on Steam Deck. This is a thing I like to do every month, so let's dive into the 20 most played games on the Steam Deck. 
Now at number one, we have Baldur's Gate 3, which is up two places over the previous 30 days. Uh, Black Myth Wukong has fallen one place to land at number two. Then we have Stardew Valley and Bellatro. Falling three places, we have Elden Ring at number five. Then leaping up six places, we have Cyberpunk 2077 at number six. Then we have Diablo 4 at number 7, followed by Vampire Survivors, Hogwarts Legacy, and Slay the Spire. At number 11, we have Deep Rock Galactic Survivor, which is up 7 places. And what I've really been wanting to see is uh, Grand Theft Auto 5. It only fell 4 places over last month, and I was expecting it to fall a lot farther. I was expecting it to be out of the top 20, honestly. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Debuting at number 14, we have The Halls of Torment, followed by Old Familiar's Monster Hunter World, Skyrim, Witcher 3, Dave the Diver, Brotato, and Binding of Isaac Rebirth, rounding out the rest of the list. Now, I'm very surprised that GTA 5 is still in the top 20, since Rockstar pulled a Rockstar and Rockstarred their fans by unrepentantly breaking the online play for Steam Deck players. Though if we look at the past week, it's now ranked at number 23, which makes a little bit more sense. I suspect that when we look at these numbers in October, GTA 5 will have fallen even lower in the list, uh, and it might not even be in the top 30. Alright, next up, I just released a new beta for my upcoming game, Chess Mess. We're in closed beta right now, and I've given a copy of the game to my patrons and my YouTube members, and some of my friends as well. This new update has focused on stability, especially on the Steam Deck. It's also focused on enhancing the user experience. The biggest change here was to the controls. You can now play the majority of the game with keyboard controls, with only a few menus requiring a mouse still. The game also now supports touchscreen natively, which is pretty cool. Now, I'm super stoked about the game's release, and I've had really great feedback so far. So if you're interested in checking out the closed beta, you can use the link below, check out the post, and find details on how you can get access. I've also set up a GitHub page where issues can be filed uh, if you're part of the closed beta. Also, if you're a YouTube member and you haven't received your key yet, you need to send me an email so that I can actually communicate with you privately because YouTube doesn't provide a way for me to talk to individual members privately. That's kind of annoying. <laughs> All right, next up, the Deck Filter Companion app has a new update out, version 1.8, and it's got some fun new features. Deck Filter is an Android and iOS app that's great for doing some quick research on a game in your library without having to bust open a laptop or head over to your desk. You can sit on your sofa with your deck and quickly reference some apps to find some config settings or do some advanced filtering of your library and more. This latest release introduces Shuffle Mode, which will randomly select a game from your library at the click of a button. This is great if you're like me and you suffer from choice anxiety and you can't figure out what you want to play. There's also now default filters that you can save and apply to your library at will. They've added overkill.wtf reports that will give you details on a specific game. And there's more to this update too. They've added automatic proton resyncing, updated the tags modal box, improved the search field, and improved the layout in several places. Deck Filter is $4.99 on Google Play, and it's a handy little tool that I highly recommend. This week, we saw two Steam Deck beta client updates, and they've introduced a few fixes. First was on October 4th, which fixed an issue with Steam VR. Then they fixed some issues with game recording, including a regression that was introduced in a previous beta client. They also fixed an issue causing exporting a clip to a file, a clipboard, or chat. And they fixed an issue in some cases where the clip export dialog would not appear. Then for Steam input, they fixed a regression that caused per controller preferences to not load in some cases. On October 8th, Valve released another beta client that included a fix for a crash while broadcasting, which was introduced in the last beta. For game recording, they added error messages when trying to load an H.265 clip or background recording with GPU acceleration or hardware video decoding disabled. All in all, I'm really excited for the stable game recording release since keeping my deck on the beta channel has had its fair share of annoyances. And it's really something that I've come to rely on here on this channel. But I'd love to know your thoughts. What features of the Steam Deck are you most looking forward to? Sound off in the comments below. Now that's pretty much everything that I wanted to cover this week. I wanna thank these guys over here, my patrons and my YouTube members. I wouldn't be able to do this show. I wouldn't be able to continue making videos just like this without your support. So if you'd like to get your name listed over here with these folks, you can do so by making a pledge on Patreon or becoming a YouTube member. It all goes a long way towards making this show a reality. Plus, members get access to exclusive content and perks. Anyway, that's gonna do it for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.